A family member disfellowship likened it to the deepest hurt that they've ever experienced. However, we must not allow strong family ties to compromise loyalty to Jehovah and to his organization. Ouch. Thought I'd call this one uh, <clears throat> Halle Evers, the Three Mormons, Dieter Uchtdorf, and the Mormon Mind and Body Snatchers. <laughs> if it sounds a little convoluted, just look at Dieter and ask yourself some questions. Uh, next to him is a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, maybe he, he's about as high as you get in their in their controlling brethren. And then we got Hinckley over there in the in the background a little bit since he's you know dead and everything. Um, I got some interesting things I want to talk about in here. So um, try to do the best I can to give a an articulating preview here. Uh, it'll, it will be covering a few different things, but in this video I just did here, uh, it really gets into showing the Jehovah's Witnesses and LDS and uh, uh, SDA using, uh, using mind control techniques to uh, really manipulate the members of the, these respective churches. And then, you know, we're talking, we see people that have come out and what they have to say, how they woke up to the mind control being used as they saw the type of things that you know you've probably heard that LDS people uh, have noticed that come out that that say <clears throat> you know the doctrines change the, the 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 scriptures contradict each other They're, you know all sorts of things that just don't add up and, and and they keep changing on us or they notice mind control being used after Steve Hassan came out of uh, Scientology and got kind of popular with his book and and stuff deprogramming people actually not Scientology uh, the Moonies. But, uh, you know, they, they all do some of the same things. And, and, and this whole, you know, uh, should I call it a fiasco or whatever's happened with the whole Hallie Everts thing, screwing up this channel so that I can't do live streaming, um, has provided um, some really good examples of how people react um, under... The influence of mind control and and so I want to talk a little bit about all these things uh, that video what's going on you know with this scene I was just mentioning and um, actually maybe do a, a review on another video she just did or, or at least parts of it and some of them she does and then just talk about and then three Mormons and I'm not going to review a three Mormons video on this um, <clears throat> but uh, if you're one of the Halle Everts fans um, you ought to take a look at some of the reviews I do on various people's videos. Okay, we're all public figures here on YouTube, okay? We're not immune to comment, that sort of a thing. It's a public forum. You're putting yourself out there, and if you notice, uh, if you notice, <laughs> the attitude that I have has to do with uh, the church, whether or not it re represents itself in its authority claims accurately or not deceitfully or not and then how people are portraying that and so there are people that i believe are shills that just do you know that that that, uh, that know they're being dishonest in defense of the church's blatant dishonesty uh people like guys at fair mormon and like three mormons and then or, or greg trimble and then there are people that are on the Mormon truth side that I feel are very honest. Guys like, you know, Vogel, Flackerman, Jonathan Streeter, you know, Tanner and Samantha doing this off on the shelf. And if I didn't mention you to someone, uh, sorry. And then there's Hallie. And she's like, she's like an honest person that speaks out and she's trying to justify her religion. She believes in it, obviously, and she's sincere, and she said, and then she's noticed things that were, you know, not congruent with her belief system, which I brought out in um, one of the videos I did, because she brought it out in a video on, on her ones where she talked about m Mormon misconceptions and culture, but she talked about the word of wisdom and brought out some things how it, you know, that, that, that are complete hypocrisy and really don't make sense. And, and I think that they may have caused her a little consternation because when we get these conflicts, when, when, we, when something doesn't work with our belief system, we try and, we try and make it work. 
we try and pound you know a, a square peg into a round hole or vice versa and that's you know and, and we put things on our shelf and so many of us that were formerly very active in the church have experienced that sort of thing and then we notice something and we're like um you know why would God command Joseph Smith to violate his marriage covenants and get involved with all these other women if Emma married him you know in, in a legal contract that stated that the term that the terms of it included you know a, a mutually exclusive marital relationship but God is evidently commanding Joseph to violate that and and get involved with all these other women which the church calls polygamy or plural marriage or in, in, in tries to imply that he was married to these women when you know he never even he denied that section 132 even existed but Brigham Young did that kind of a thing at least bottom line there is obviously God has no integrity if someone is you know if Emma married Joseph on the on the agreement that that he would be you know a one woman man and God's saying sorry we got a new plan here uh, too bad that she promised that herself to you and you know gave herself to you on, on those terms I'm telling you to not honor the terms that's what we have to actually believe and and if we realize that we go something screwed up here because God's supposed to have integrity but evidently he doesn't and then you get in the Old Testament and you go okay well he said don't murder but he's a murderer and he said don't come you know one thing after another and it's like okay this guy's got no morals at all all you got to do is carefully read the Old Testament and realize this guy's a schmuck sorry but he is <laughs> by the by the by, by the Jewish prophets tell us this is what God said and this is what he did this is what he commanded us to do and he's completely immoral there's no other reasonable conclusion if anyone else did it you wouldn't make the, the excuses for him but if it's you know Yahweh you make up these excuses so anyway uh, I just like that opening thing there huh let, I, we'll take a so I did a couple of videos here uh, well the two came out yesterday two little ones I did kind of got a little you know a bit of chiding from a guy on reddit was going you know these two hour videos there's only like six out of a couple hundred but a lot of them are fairly long he's like so uh, I, I I put some stuff into like 16 minute video I think it's really good here and then I did another one was like an hour and three quarters that actually had a little some of that in there that really gets into how these guys use the mind control on us and it's it's obviously effective because the things that you've got to believe to be in these religions if you think if you use your mind you know are that they just make no sense however they so cleverly keep us from realizing uh, a lot of things and, uh, and, and guide our thoughts away from the things that that uh, allow us to see those controversies. So if you're LDS, you just think, oh, the gospel's been restored. It's so wonderful. We're not like those silly Christians. You know, I mean, obviously their gospel's screwed up because everybody's going to hell except for like, you know, half a percent of the people on earth or something, you know? Or whatever it is, right? And do you have to be in the right denomination there too to not go to hell forever? I mean, it's ridiculous. If you lived, if you were born and in an area where Jesus Christ wasn't taught, which means, <laughs> you know, do the math. God's a complete failure, all right, via Christianity. But with Mormonism, you just have to wait in the spirit waiting room, according to Halley, you know, because that's the way they teach it now. But if you look at the scriptures, no, sorry, that's pretty much hell. You know, there's only two places to go when you get done with this life, and one's not very good. It's described with fire and brimstone and all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, yeah. Or, or you're in the good place, you know, like heaven or the uh, spirit, spirit paradise. Um, and, and, and trying to, you know, say that the Book of Mormon's got the fullness of the gospel in it and then changing to the doctrines, the Swedenborgian, Emmanuel Swedenborg doctrines that Joseph Smith put in the Doctrine and Covenants. It's kind of a difficult transition to go from this and say this was the fullness of the gospel which said you're going to heaven or you're going to hell and wherever you get wind up that's where you stay forever that's what it says and it says fire and brimstone you know book of mormon is totally all about being christian 
But the Doctrine and Covenants still says you're going to hell if you do certain things, like go to a different church. Read it. It's in section 76. Same place the murderers go. You're going there too if you went to the wrong church. <laughs> it's, it's there, plain as day. Section 138 says, though, you're, you're, you're waiting somewhere for the missionaries, but it says where these guys are waiting for the missionaries, which is basically everybody, you know, 99.9% .9 of the people that ever lived, to have a few missionaries try to teach, you know, billions of people so they can get out of this place. And it says, it says darkness reigned there. Jesus didn't go there, according to Joseph F. Smith. You know, during the uh, days when he would have been in the tomb. Days, it's what is a day and a half, basically, if you look at it. But um, he said he didn't go there. He organized his forces from among the righteous. For where they went, darkness reigned. Darkness reigned. So you could be, you could be the, the nicest person on earth, but you go to where darkness reigned, which is where all the really bad people went too. So that's only been described as hell everywhere else. I don't know how we change the rhetoric. Um, it, 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 it rewards people with evil for doing good. And they just have to wait for the Mormon missionaries. I mean, but you don't think about that. You just think, we're doing good. We're baptizing people in the temple. And the elders will get there. They're in a hurry. You, you know, you have to wait a year. So that you think they're actually going to get to the, everybody that dies within a year. They're all caught up now. Really? Oh gosh, it's endless. Okay, so I want to, I want to take a look at a couple of these things here on this, at this, just because it was Dieter the transsexual. Sorry, Dieter, but Dieter, um, he's a manipulator. He's really smooth, but he is a manipulator, and they should be smooth. That's what makes him effective. It helps, and these guys are NLP masters, obviously. Um, all right, so I'm going to click on that. Then I want to get into some of these comments. I, well, maybe I should do it right away. Okay, so this is so mind controlled. So here's, I wasn't going to look at this at that, you know, Halley goes shopping. I mean, I'm into the doctrinal stuff, right? But, um, okay, we got the volume turned off down here. So, but I was, I, I went over anyway for something uh, on a comment and on something else. And I go, oh, let's click on this one anyway. I thought, you know, it seems trite, gross, grocery shopping, but. She's all into the organic stuff, which I should have, you know, thought of anyway, right? Uh, which, and so, she, actually, I, I made a bunch of really nice comments there. I had nothing, nothing to do with, I wasn't saying, you know, well, I don't know. Maybe I did say, like, we shouldn't eat meat or something. Maybe I mentioned the word of wisdom. But I was, I was pretty much all about, you know, oh, she said, oh, I don't want to, you know, use milk products and smoothies. And they got, you know, the, they don't wind up with too much sugar or glycemic index or something. I was going, hey. You know, and then she liked this is the Ezekiel 38 bread, you know, if you're into that at all. And, and she goes, it's pretty sweet, and there's like no sugar in it. And, you know, they got a couple of raisins in it. So I, I commented, and I said, you know, the, the reason it's probably sweetish, kind of sweet, is because the grains are sprouted, and that changes the chemistry, and you get, like, natural sugars in the grain. You get malt and stuff from, from wheat, and, I mean, that bread's got, like, like, seven grains or something in it. It's really good bread. Um, I'm quite familiar with it. So, um, and I mentioned, you know, you can actually sprout wheat. I mean, it's hard to grow. Growing wheat sprouts can, can you know, be a little bit challenging, but for, for wheat grass, but I've talked about that in there because she's all talking about her nutrition, right? And so I said, hey, you, know, you can just sprout the stuff and it's like, you know, got an eighth of an inch on it or if it's, just, it's just soft and just changed a little bit and it's not all super, you know, sproutified. And it's just softened, but there's the chemical change, plus it's soft enough. And you can just eat it for cereal. Or you can add a little honey and have a little soy milk with it or whatever. Or, or you can throw a little bit of that in a little rolled oats and banana and papaya and stuff and make these smoothies without it being all, you know, dairy products and stuff. So I talked about a lot of stuff. She mentioned Monsanto. So I, I mentioned, so I said, yeah. And I, you know, she said something about Roundup. And, you know, they used to say, oh, Roundup dissipates within, th you know, basically broken down within three days. You can you know, use it and it's not going to harm your crops. And so I, I mentioned some other things uh, in there that I'm aware of with, you know, the pesticide use and that kind of a thing, like, like in a lot of your crops. Maybe I'm getting too deep onto this, but I'm just saying, I, I, I talked about some of these at things. I made a good contribution to this, to her video comments here. 
And I wasn't saying, hey, you're a freak because you're a Mormon, you're a weirdo. You no, know, not at all. And I said, you know, you, some of your friends have talked about the, the vegan thing and, uh, you know, what do you think about that? And, uh, you know, organics are a really good idea because they, they allow spraying with like lores ban and stuff, you know, in agriculture, at least they used to, uh, long after they'd banned the same stuff, chloropyphorus, uh, for use in residential pest control because it's so harmful to people. It went under a different name. It goes under the name of Dursban. It's you know, made by Dow Chemical. And because she was, she was kind of ragging on these pharmaceutical companies with the vaccination thing earlier. And I was trying to say, hey, you know what? Pharmaceutical, petroleum, and uh, you know, these other chemical companies are pretty closely tied together. They're all, all you know, doing stuff that are really bad for our health. So um, anyway. My comments are erased. <laughs> My comments are erased. So I, I go in here and I see this. I, I go back. This was like yesterday. So I go back and I go, oh, I'm just going to take a look here. And it's like, where are my comments? Okay. And then there's some other, and I did it like under, you know, under my other channel, I think, Mormon Truth. And so, because somebody said, maybe she blocks you or something. I mean, my comments are there. My comments are on her stuff that say stuff like um you know stuff having to do with the church but she wipes out this why does she want to make it look like i never say anything that's like not controversial or anyway some other gal here let's find it her name is youtube mama or something here mentions me in here and says don't worry about dodger game he probably actually just brings you more views, which is probably true. And then I responded to that just a few minutes ago and said, um, <clears throat> why is this difficult to find? Um, yeah, why should she worry about it? I basically say positive things about her all the time. It's not like she's one of the three Mormons, you know, that are, that I, you know, feel are dishonest. Cause I think she's, I think she's really an honest person. And even that response now is looks like she just got rid of it. Where's this girl? Okay, is it right here? Okay, right, here it is. YouTube Mama. I love this video. I think you should totally do a hell series. Oh, and I don't worry about Dodger game. If anything, he's probably bringing more views to your channel. And I responded. I said, yeah, hopefully so, because I say nice things about you. I'm actually pretty much of a fan, because I think she's an honest person, and she says a lot of good things. Um, but there's some things she doesn't know about the church. I mean, when you're 24 and they've changed so much stuff, how would you know? Okay? Um, I know. Read the CES letter. You might learn a few things. Or there's a lot of things that aren't in the CES letter. And, you know, in fact, in my videos I did on the CES letter, I added a bunch of things that they didn't have on some that, you know, weren't like in the Book of Abraham stuff, I think. A few of them. But, I mean, Jeremy did a great job there, let's face it. So, Hallie doesn't know about this stuff, you know? So, in this video she did today here, she's talking about this, you know, the marriage thing here. Um, this one. And it's just another case of mind control. In, in, in another good example because um make sure i got the volume off no see we're not talking you're not don't we're not you got no copyright claim sorry Hallie. um so she's doing this book she's re doing kind of a book review and she says some really good things she she and, and i commented and she, um, she's probably wiped that out already too <laughs> maybe not maybe she left it up um, so, you know, she says, hey, you know, I read feminist kind of stuff where girls are saying, oh, if he isn't, you know, perfect, or, you know, you're not being acknowledged enough, just dump that sucker and you're on your way, babe. And, and Holly's saying, no, that's not right. You should be, like, really committed to a relationship. And, uh, you know, stick with it and be patient with people and be honest and upfront. And she says some really great things, and I acknowledge that. But what I notice with the church in these books is they always – find a way to spin something so it promotes the organization and usually with something that is not true that, that's the word spin i mean you can take something to make a true example and, and 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 you know promote something 
but the, the almost invariably what they do is they take something that's not accurate and they make an incorrect uh, you know assertion to start off with start off on some kind of false premise or something that doesn't equate and then come out making it all okay you know and, and like in this video she talks about how she's basically come to the conclusion now that trials and stuff really are good for you and that God just, you know, because a lot of people go, well, why does God allow all this crap to happen? You read the Bible and it says things and, and God doesn't keep his word, obviously. But, you know, within Mormonism, they're always making up these excuses to why things are still not right. You know, God just, he's allowing you to grow through tribulation and stuff. Yeah, well, you know, read my patriarchal blessing, Hallie, you know. <laughs> okay, I was like one of the most dedicated people I've ever met. And uh, promises were lies. The promises were lies. Listen to that song, what, Cherokee by the Europe. Long time ago, 80s rock and roll. Semi, you know, whatever. Yeah, the promises were lies. And that's the way it is. The promises are lies. So many of them. And, uh, you know, she, on this other one she did on the marriage thing, like I said, she's doing a great job, and she's looking to make, make positive difference in people's lives. I like her, okay? She is not one of the three Mormons. They are dishonest, even though there's only two of them, <laughs> except when they have a guest. Those guys are shills. This girl is not. But she, she is, she's, she's, she's making me disappear, <laughs> you know, when I make a comment that does nothing basically but to say, you know what, this is really great, I agree with you. It's all about wheat sprouts and stuff or whatever. And still, you know what? Because why? What's in this video? That's why. This other video that I was looking at, that, that um, this one right here. This garbage that these people are programming with people. So we'll turn it up. Listening to the proselytizing efforts of those who have lost their faith and instead reconnect promptly with the Holy Spirit. I hadn't paid attention to Numbers chapter 31, really. His organization. We should disconnect immediately and completely from listening to the proselytizing efforts of those who have lost their faith and instead reconnect promptly with the Holy Spirit. Human apostates are mentally diseased, and they try to infect others with their disloyal teachings. With good reason, then, the Bible tells us to avoid apostates just as we would avoid a person who is infected with a contagious, deadly disease. Studying the church through the eyes of its defectors, Elder Neil A. Maxwell once said, is like interviewing Judas to understand Jesus. Same chapter, verse 17. Notice what it says. The Bible says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the what? What is the doctrine that we've been given? The three angels' message. So anybody that causes a, causes a division that's contrary to the doctrine, there, you, it's, notice what it says you are to do. It says, contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. You are to mark them and avoid them. Who's that, Ted Wilson? Who, any other pastor or preacher, doesn't matter who, we, any, anyone else who is causing a division contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. You are to mark them and avoid them. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. All of these guys are saying, if someone has a belief that's different from what we're teaching you, avoid them. Avoid them. Shut them out. It's the devil. That's called information control. It's also behavioral control, especially when it involves members of your own family. The church says they're all for family, but they destroy families. When someone in the family no longer believes because they've done a little bit of their homework and they see the contradictions and the deliberate de deception that the brethren practice, I mean, it's all you got to do is, is go to LDS.org, look at the Gospel Topics essays and compare the scriptures to the lies that they put in there and go, um, these guys are dishonest and they know it. It's not rocket science. You do that and your family is told to shun you. 
Temple recommend interview. Do you affiliate with? Do you, do you, do you, you know, sympathize with? You know, hang out with? Whatever exactly the language is. Anybody who's, you know, believes or not in line with the church. I used to, I used to say, well, of course I do. What do you think? I didn't have a bishop that gave me trouble about it. You know, I said, yeah, I interact with other people in the world. You know, not everybody, I know we're, we're like a convert family, you know. It's like not all of my relatives or, every, you know, what, what, what am I going to do? Like tell them all to go to hell? Okay. But that does happen. And, and if people come out and actually say something, like me, for instance, you know, that could be a problem. Or some, some of these folks... Uh, now, this is the big one, isn't it? Yeah, this is the big video, isn't it? No wonder it's hard to find things. Okay. Yeah, so this is Catholic Apologetics, and he's talking to uh, some girl that came out of SDA. She and her husband. Unfortunately, if they're talking to him, they're still in the same rut. Same crap, different day. <laughs> same problem, same deception, different organization. Um... Now she's talking to the guys that just burn people at the stake if they don't, you know, agree with their church. Brigham Young didn't do that. He just said slit their throat and make it nice and quick. He didn't believe in burning people to the death. So Brigham Young was an improvement over the Pope. However, that's no longer considered acceptable. So all these all, all, all these teachings we get about the church being so wonderful and awesome, supportive... It's not quite the way that they say that it is. And uh, let me do it. The murderous hatred that Satan the devil has for all faithful servants of Jehovah God is still very much active in this earth. I said, no, no, I know what this is like. This is a political thing. And this is you're... Sounds a little more culty from the J-dubs. But we have time after time hearing it from the LDS leaders, too. I am a dedicated and baptized servant of Jehovah. As a result of remaining faithful, uh, the remaining... And it's Satan who's out to get you and steal your testimony. And everybody that doesn't believe in the gospel anymore, well, they're just serving Satan. So you got to disconnect, even if they're family. Anointed ones who are on the earth and all of those who associate with them and who support them in their work are in a war, a literal war against Satan the devil and the wicked spirit forces. I believe Satan's ever expanding efforts are some proof of the truthfulness of this work. Satan especially desires to deceive the Latter-day Saints, those who know the truth about him. When someone becomes a dedicated and baptized servant of Jehovah, we want him to stay closely attached to the organization. Yet every year, there are... We want him to stay closely attached to the organization. Okay. So, here on his big screen, first we had Gordon Hinckley shaking hands with Dick Cheney, and if you did a close-up, which you can, and I've done in other videos, it is a well-recognized Masonic handshake. Just like we've got Thomas Monson doing with George Bush here. And so, what did this guy just say? We want to keep them in the organization. And that's exactly what secret societies, secretive societies, secret combinations do. And that's exactly what Joseph Smith brought into the temple with Freemasonry. When he bought, brought in the signs, tokens, and penalties, especially, of Freemasonry. All those things, and then binding that in your mind to your family staying together forever. Not to mention the fact that guys like Joseph Smith and Brigham Young just were wife snatchers. You know, Brigham was worse, I guess. Well, Joseph just shared. You know, Brigham took people's wives away from him. Said, ah, he, your wife belongs to Joseph Smith, because uh, now he's been sealed to her, so, or they've been sealed to him. So I'm going to take custody of your wife. She's my property, along with your kids. Go find someone else, in, like in the Henry Jacobs case, for instance. So, here we got binding in through temple covenants. We've got your family. You stay in line, or we're taking them. 
you lose them for all eternity in the belief system. And if they can convince your wife to ditch you, you know, you'll find yourself another worthy priesthood guy uh, if you no longer believe that the church is true. Otherwise, she's out in the cold. You know, right? According to the belief system. So they got the carrot and the stick, as Tony Robbins might say it, in terms of motivational uh, tools. Anyway, let's get it. So this is just a little clip out of, out of what I just did, uh, published, but it's got, I, I think this is really important stuff. A number who stop attending meetings and become inactive. A few of you may have run into some who have ceased to hold fast to the iron rod. Hold on with both hands. Wandered off the straight and narrow path and have become lost. Some have immersed themselves in internet materials that magnify, exaggerate, and in some cases invent shortcomings. All right, are we magnifying or inventing shortcomings here? Pardon the innuendo. He said it, not me. So we're looking at the Book of Abraham, hieroglyphic pornography, right here. Um, and, and this guy says that the Internet is creating stuff that isn't true so that you won't believe in Mormonism. However, this was in facsimile to, and this is figure seven, it's upside down the way it's printed there because everything you know underneath the halfway mark or so is uh, upside down in this you had to turn the thing so everything could be upside whatever that's just the way they did it you know, these these uh, Egyptian people and uh, so Joseph Smith said that this was uh, had to do with Abraham and in, in, in you know he related all these things to the book of Abraham even though they were like written like 2,000 years after Abraham would have been not alive if he ever did live and so you know the, the according to the Egyptologists that know what these stuff these hieroglyphs mean this guy here who's got the uh, Cialis overdose um, symptom he is Pharaoh and I guess his concubines in the next room and she's getting ready to come and take care of his uh, needs or something but According to Joseph Smith, this is God, the Father, sitting there, and, and, and these two guys that are paying so much close attention to him uh, are, are like uh, Abraham and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, you know, third member of the Godhead. So he's talking to two dudes, one of them's a spirit dude and one of them's, you know, Abraham, and um, he's talking about the Holy Priesthood, the key words of the Holy Priesthood, while he's... Uh, in this state of needing medical attention or something because you know if you, if you experience this problem more than four hours call the doctor or something when they like they say on the disclaimers on the on on the viagra and cialis commercials and, but he's sitting there talking to two dudes about the priesthood relaxing there with his um uh difficult situation or something so um this is not stuff people invented on the neighbor, uh, on the internet. This is in your scriptures. Open them up. They are there. It's there. Figure two, figure seven, in fact, simile two. And according to Joseph Smith, it's actually God sitting there in that state of affairs, um, talking to two dudes. So um, that's that's your God. That's whom you worship. Joseph Smith said, "You must know." It is like the first principle of heaven to understand who and, and what you worship. Because God said to worship him, apparently. You know, whoever God is. God the Father or Jesus Christ or whoever. But this is God the Father, according to Joseph Smith. And he is uh, he's the kind of guy who will talk to you about the priesthood with his shorts off uh, in a state of uh, readiness for reproduction. So, you worship this dude? You know, seriously, this is what Joseph Smith is telling us. That's that. That's beyond ridiculous. Anyway, so I threw that in this video because basically this stuff is just supposed to, you know, look at the. You, you don't have to go to an anti-Mormon website to get the content. It's just that some people will help you to notice what's already in your scriptures or what these guys are telling you that try to confuse us. And talk in circles. Let's hear a little bit more. Of early church leaders. Then they hold on with both hands. 
Hold on with both hands. You may draw incorrect conclusions that can affect testimony. Apostates do not drift away from the truth. They deliberately decide to go out from among God's people. They leave the old ship Zion. They fall away. They apostatize. Tragically, they often experience short-term and eventually long-term unintended consequences. Don't they look more healthy, better adjusted, now that they're not, you know, attending sacrament meeting, brainwashing, or, excuse me, mind washing, mind control sessions. These two look a lot healthier, better adjusted to life than some of these people that are erasing even a comment about grocery items you know, for having organic foods and stuff like that because, oh my God, the guy is aligned with Satan because he said that the prophets don't say, say things that aren't true. And now, my God, he's shown us that God has a, <laughs> a Cialis overdose problem in our very scriptures. I mean, you can't make this stuff up and have it be more, okay, revealing. <laughs> than looking at what they've got on LDS.org. And we're supposed to believe this stuff is coming from the invisible dude that talks to these guys that tell us what to do and give them lots of money for a contract that they have no responsibility in fulfilling. Only he does. But they'll judge us along the way and tell us how, how well we're doing and take away our temple recommend if we don't give them enough money or or, you know, get taught, caught drinking green tea or something instead of Coca-Cola. <laughs> Good Lord. All right. Let me do like a 10 second promo here. Okay, so I think these guys are funny. They are. They say a lot of uh, really... Um, good informative things and they say it in a way that's a lot more entertaining than me saying it so you got to check out some of these elf on the shelf episodes Mormon enforcement uh was the one we were watching here right before i, I, I paused it here because i had little clips in there from these two because they do a fantastic job so let's promote them check them out they're they, they got some they got some really worthwhile material in my opinion very smart they've studied a lot of stuff and they present well, obviously. Okay. So, uh, if you go watch some Zelf on the Shelf stuff, th their sound quality is fine. Somehow, um, in my videos, it doesn't uh, come out quite right uh, in some of the clips that I've um, that I've uh, shared their uh, material with. So, um, at any rate, uh, going directly to their channel, you'll get. Uh, really really fine uh, sound quality it's not it's not all like uh, echo chamber sounding when you get there like it is somehow on this particular uh, video of mine okay I think I'm probably just gonna wind this one up pretty quick here let's me see, I'll, I'll just say what I'm about to what I next couple of videos I probably want to do are gonna be 
Um, I, I might actually review a couple of Hallie's um, marriage covenant thing. I realize she's trying to do something positive. And once again, I want to say I am not personally attacking her. Um, I, I do note some of the things that she brings out that, the, that she parrots uh, as she absorbs it from the church seem to have fallacies in them because they twist everything. They twist your marriage relationship. So it's, uh, it's got to be all about the Lord, you know. Uh, as a matter of fact, she mentioned one thing in here that I, that I commented on, and maybe it's erased already, so I'll just mention it. She said something like, you know, some people say that like the temple ceremony is like not really very pro-woman and stuff, but, you know, I don't think it's that way. And, uh, okay. And, and so in my, in my comment, I said, well, you know, you wouldn't probably because they've changed it a lot. But, say, pre-1990, whenever that happened, like April or so of 1990, uh, the endowment that I experienced, um, you know, it was, uh, you know, promoting uh, yeah, a heavy subservience. It was. You know, the, it's in, and this is the endowment. This isn't even in the ceiling ceremony. This is in the endowment, and, and they tell the women, you, co you covenant to obey in as much as Eve screwed up first and listened to Lucifer, okay, um, Here's how you can be saved from your sins. Obey your husband and have lots of babies. Okay? You know, you know women shall be saved in, in childbearing. So, um, it says, you covenant to obey your husband. That's it. It was, it was, it seemed, as far as I remember, it was like non, unconditional. Obey. Okay? And, and you know, I mean, married, weddings have been that way for Holly for a long time, but they, they don't say that anymore. You promised just to obey. Then they changed it in 1990 to say, you will hearken unto Adam as Adam hearkens unto the Lord. So, so it was changed to say, basically, you'll hearken, which means listen and obey, to your husband in as much as he hearkens unto the Lord. So, you know, a good and faithful wife would basically, you know, go along with something reasonable from her husband as long as he was pretty much following whatever the church said. And if he stopped believing that the gospel was true, or if he was a jerk or whatever, she could just say, or if he was just imperfect, you know, she could say, well, you know, you don't perfectly hearken to the Lord, so I'm not, I'm not going to listen to anything you say. Um, so effectively, that did make some changes, and I don't know what it says anymore, but uh, that's a lot different from what it used to be. And, you know, I also mentioned that Brigham Young said, you know, I, I think no more of taking another wife than I do of another cow. William, or, William women, women are valued in the church <laughs> as cows. Brigham Young told uh, Henry Jacobs, I'm taking your wife. She's now my property. Your wife and children are now my property. Property. So, um, you know, I made that... It sound like Tony Robbins again. I haven't listened to the dude in years. Making that distinction, yeah. Um, the uh, the treatment of women has been horrible, and it's been horrible. It a lot of women are treated nice in the church now, but I'm saying, it, it, if we're to believe that this Yahweh dude, you know, who, whom Joseph Smith calls Elohim, because the Jews, I'm not going to get into the etymology of the language right now. Anyway. The God, the Heavenly Father, dude, the Sky Daddy. Um, you know, if we're going to believe, to take this dude seriously, then we have to look at what he says because he says he's unchanging, even though he's obviously not unchanging. He's completely anthropomor anthropomorphic, and he's a complete jerk. Murders his own children. Does all kinds of stuff that makes no sense at all, and he's just a horrendous individual, just an evil tribal god, like basically all evil tribal gods were, and. Uh, Still are in some cases. So, um, we did a video that showed a bunch of stuff in the Old Testament. You know, how to, how to treat your wife and your slaves. Slavery was approved. You know, the whole thing. And, uh, never kill anybody that's gay. And, uh, you know, make your wife drink a dirt smoothie and cause an abortion with a priest cursing her if you think she might have been fiddling around. It's horrendous. So this is your God. This is the same God that's, you know, talking to Abraham with his shorts off and all that. How do you... What, what mental gymnastics do you really have to go through to realize that this is not 
You know, uh, this is not this. He's not presented that way in church anymore. But it says he's unchanging. So either either that's true or it's not. If it's not, then their authority claims are a bunch of crap, which you know is proven in other hundred ways as well. So um, save your money, ten percent of your gross income, and have a second Saturday. Uh, well, I watched a. We're in history here. I watched a bunch of videos from this other girl um, last night. And, um, turn back on the volume here. She, um, she calls her, uh, channel like, uh, the a atheist minority. And, uh, she does a really great job on, uh, going through the scriptures in the Old Testament and the New Testament here, um, that helped her to, re to, to answer a lot of questions. And Luke all depict Jesus as instituting the Lord's Supper on the first day of Passover. However, in the book of John, the Lord's Supper is never instituted because Jesus was already dead by Passover. Instead, he performs a foot washing ceremony and shares a final meal with his disciples the night before. Of course, some apologists attempt to explain this discrepancy with long-winded descriptions about how Pharisees and Sadducees celebrated feast days differently, or that you have to look at the solar calendar. Looks like I'm running out of phone memory. So, anyway, um, got to check her stuff out. It's really good. Long-winded apologists. Yeah, basically, she hit the nail on the head. Because when you don't have the truth backing you up, you got to talk people in circles long enough till they're so confused they think they need to pray about it. And if they're worthy, they'll feel right about it. If they don't get that, they were unworthy. Great circular reasoning, mind control, that's Mormonism. Signing off. We'll be back later. Maybe. And, uh, yeah, three Mormons were, uh, twisting some things again and i really want to go over some stuff that jonathan jonathan streeter did finger thoughts uh that's kind of a deeper one uh, he's talking about three mormons and a bunch of different stuff and uh it ties in with a lot of things that um i think need some clarification so um and hopefully get into doing that one because uh um it's, it's a good subject matter and jonathan's pretty articulate um he's a pretty smart dude uh there are a couple of things that he doesn't seem to notice that I do on some things. I'm not saying I'm smarter. I'm not. I've been on the on the whatever we live on longer, and uh, I got a little different world view. But as far as picking apart what people do, I don't think there's anybody that does a better job than he does. So um, he dissects the uh, apologetic nonsense, um, dishonesty. Uh, that sort of thing uh, very well that um, not only did three Mormons do but um, you know what they were talking about in, in the gospel topic essays uh, and so forth just the whole psychology of it is a psychology of absolute deception and uh, anyway we'll get to it hopefully thanks for watching